IMP, the Health Organization Phenomena in Mathematics and the World. And thank you very much. Thank you, Rochelle. I'm extremely honored to be here at the first women's account of the one who is Nina and not the Scientific Committee of the Conference. Thank you so much. It's really an honor to be here. I'm a little bit intimidated, you see, because the thoughts have been of uh, such a high level, all of them, you know, and uh, I need to apologize in advance because my talk would be completely elementary. But we have some young people here in the audience, next to me, and so my talk is directed to, to the young people in the audience. Uh, uh, I want, I think, I write zero equations in my talk. Uh, so, uh, but I feel hope that I convey the excitement of the field. What I want to convey is more the excitement of the field than very specific mathematical field. This is a public lecture for a general audience. It will be recorded. So I apologize to all these of mathematicians in the room uh, because uh, my talk is uh, directed to a very general audience. Very well. Uh, so, What's going on? Uh, it is uh, it's very astonishing that we have all these extremely structured things in the world called living beings. So they are, uh, they have these levels upon levels of structure. And uh, it is not unreasonable that uh, previous generations. Uh, immediately attributed the divine origin and the sign of all these structures. Uh, for they are awesome. And uh, but of course, the monumental intellectual achievement of Charles Darwin uh, gave us a mechanism to produce extremely elaborate structures uh, of uh, our of the laws of physics and chemistry and so on. Uh, the, these things, these living beings, also seem to violate so called second law of thermodynamics. Uh, but more or less, it's a thing thanks to chaos, to disorder, to disorder in space. And you see these flowers growing, growing more disorder, disorganization around these beautiful flowers, full of structure. What's going on? And uh, it's a difficult thing to understand, we don't understand it in terms of uh, why Darwin's contribution allows us to understand how one could, from a self reproducing machine, produce, let's say, even more adapted, let me just say, to the even better machine uh, that self copy themselves. Uh, the, the origin of life remains a uh, a profound mystery. And there have been a lot, a lot of developments in the last few decades uh, that allows us to understand it much better, but it's still an outstanding problem. So, self organization, things that organize themselves into this very low entropy, very organized, very dense information states. Okay, so uh, uh, I will start by talking about several states that have this complexity, they are called complex systems, things that have some sort of self-organization and uh, that they're all over the place. And, and I like to stress that the ischemia environment, one of the signatures of these self-organizations and, and complexity, uh, it's very hard to find a system like this, and I will come back to this. But uh, it's very hard to find a chair. And then one says, well, yes, uh, Mr. Arcano, oh, yes, this is a chair, it is not. We have the problem of the ship of Theseus. Uh, but, uh, but then we more or less agree what is a chair. Then we more or less agree what is a complex system. That's a very, very many parts. Then it's there are long scale, non linearly. Uh, but what does it mean, the real world, in practice, for non specialists? Well, 
I don't remember the physical page. What? And this is like a typical example of a scale. So you take a very long text. Imagine you take all of Wikipedia. And uh, it, it turns out that uh, uh, then you put all the words that appear in this text. No listen for that. Then you take all the words that appear on this text and uh, the battery is gone. Then you take all the words that appear on this text and you run them from the most used word to the one that appears the least of. The is the most used word in this enormous text that we give you. And it does a lot of the work. Just the word that the does 10% of the work in Wikipedia. Oh, I'm excited because it's a bit out of the everything works one is dead. So it does a lot of the work. It's, 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 it's a very full word. Bring a bring and so used you know. And then uh, so it's the, but, it's but what is very interesting is that it curves the same. If you take Wikipedia or just or encyclopedia Britannica, or maybe only just the collected works of Shakespeare. Uh, it, it's something that is called the uh, emergence or universality. It seems strange enough to depend on the particular details of the complex system. All of a sudden, this extremely simple straight line law appears, and it didn't really matter if it was Encyclopedia Britannica or Wikipedia. This is very peculiar. It's exactly the same line. Well, it's more variation. And uh, so this is some phenomenon of universal. Uh, it seems not to depend on there were all these agents, all these world people who have chosen, all these authors in the Wikipedia, all these subjects, and yet in the end you get this universal flow. Uh, this is possible. Uh, Steve, when discovering this, he was a linguist. He, she created the theory of perpetual attachment. We don't really, even today, we don't really know. We don't really have a satisfactory explanation of Steve's law. Many things, Steve's law uh, is a challenge in the modern world and prior to the internet. Because if you take this text and you take this word that appears uh, very seldom, quality, and Around 40% more, depending on the text a little bit, but I still mean it also. Say 40% of the words in the book appear only once. In this huge book, appear only once. And you take a large book. And this gives a signature, uh, an equivocal signature to the book. So if you take uh, Google uh, and uh, the one which you look for the text in the books, and you pick a book from your library, take two lines of the book, so let's see on this, put it in Google, you find the book in some things. So this makes privacy extremely hard. You have a very easy to detect signature because of the scaling laws of language and uh, all the text written about you, documents, etc. So have, have a very particular signature that is easy to detect. And these people try to do these sorts of uh, Differential privacy algorithms. But it's a challenge because it's extremely, it's extremely easy to know who is doing what on the internet because of this scaling law. There's no privacy on the internet, and this is the reason that there is no privacy on the internet. Okay. There is a scaling laws all over nature. Uh, this is the heart rate of animals, and this is the body weight. But notice that while here there was a ranking of the words, and this probability that the work will the next work will be uh be expected. Knowing that the assets are not linearly uh, ordered, they are in orders in powers of ten, orders of magnitude, one, ten, a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, and so on. And in the other two, the problem can get to one, the ten percent of the world. So from one point zero, one point zero, zero, one, zero, 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 one. So it's not. At all uh, linear, it's scaling law, it's a power. Uh, and if you do this so called, it's called logarithmic scales on the axis, then uh, you get this straight line. 
indicating the validation power. So the power rates of animals became this scale if they are a power of all the way versus the power rate. And the metabolic rates of animals are a power law. The patterns in a city are a power law. A city twice the study doesn't have twice the effect patterns. It has too many, many more. And it grows very, very rapidly. It doesn't grow linearly on the sides of the city. It's not the same to have one million tiny small cities of 10 people that are 10 million people city. It's very different than that. And non-linear interactions make the number of patterns explode. But again, there's this universality, this extreme simple law coming out of the normal number of interactions in a way that we don't understand and we support, and we suspect that there's com a irreducible uh, computational irreducibility that we will never quite know. Uh, this is a very important example for me to study because. I live in Mexico City. And therefore, earthquakes are an issue. Uh, we just have to get with that weeks ago. And uh, what is it? How many earthquakes of what size do we have? How many? What's the probability that within the next year we'll have an earthquake of size one, size two, size three? But again, it's a power law. That's why earthquakes, uh, the S is the energy. Delivered by the earthquake. And that's why we take the logarithm, the order of magnitude of the energy, not the energy itself. We take the logarithm, the number of zeros in the energy of the earthquake, not the earthquake itself. And again, the probability that the earthquake will occur is linear in the in the or the order of magnitude of probability is linear in the order of magnitude of the earthquake. That's a simple law. And uh, this is very important in seismology. And again, People have tried and tried very hard to take the Newton's laws, get function model, model of bird, and try to do model like for weather, and try to even just get this power law. We can't. And then it's getting work, I'm saying that there have to be very hard. We don't quite get it. It's very hard to reduce this extremely simple law to the laws of physics, to the laws of Newton. It seems that there is this computational irreducibility of the complexity. That one has to choose the right scale for explanatory narratives of the physical system. One has to look at it in the correct scale. And of course, Mandel Ma was a master noticing different scales in systems and looking at the right scale and all this stuff. But this is very interesting, you know. Uh, and of course, physicists discover, and rather than say, well, it's not a physicist, it's not smart. They say, no, let's not look at the laws of physics. Let's look at a graph, combinatorial model. This is graph theory. Yeah, but I, I would not say that graph theory, I would just put it, imagine you have this enormous table, very large, and it's made of these tiny square parts, tiny square parts. And then you write it down. Every square foot you have a number of grains of sand. Four, three, two, one, zero, seven, twenty, a million. Number of grains of sand on any square. And then two scales the scale of the table, the tiny scale of the squares, and the tiny scale of the grains of sand. Three scales. And then you have the same. And now, you, you say that this is the little bit an imaginary universe where all that is in the universe is the table. And the laws of physics just at this scale are just the point. Whenever it's four, five, six, seven, or more, more than three, this this the time becomes unstable. It has too much average and it shoots for the instant to the four numbers. Just shoots for the instant. And then uh, it topples the space for for the uh, grains of sand for, for neighbors. And now this all of two became unstable, and they do it. And then if it is bigger than it's unstable, then it does it for taking it. And <laughs> time is scaled. One of these phenomena occurs at every say second, big stuff, big stuff, and then and they topple, 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 topple. And then there is this toppling, and then it becomes, you see this. 
because it is trying to move in some countries. It is trying to move in. It started with a configuration, but it wants to go down. And if it goes to the edge, it falls off and disappears. And so the trying is moving in complicated ways. And it goes down and down, and some of it falls from the table. Okay. And uh, well, there's a remarkable fact that it's a beautiful problem for secondary school kids. Beautiful. That is, when you could topple here or here or here or here, and in what order? Here, mathematical field, the final state doesn't depend on the order of the topic. It's very surprising. It's not the targets, but it's harder than other field. And uh, for the typical graph here, the final state is independent of the order of the topic. Amazing. It's, and that, in honor of Henrik uh, Abel, is called uh, an Abelian sun. But, but forget the word Abelian. We just call it sun. Okay. Now, say we have a table. But it's large, it's humongous, it's large. And you put, and you say, no, oh, you are big back. I'm going to put a billion grains of sun at the center of it. I'm going to just use this law, nothing else. Just bigger than four shoots, bigger than four shoots, bigger than three shoots, bigger than three shoots, bigger than three shoots, stop, stop, stop. I do nothing. So just a very low entropy state. And let it go. It's a very simple law. I said there's almost nothing. It's about integer numbers, positive integer numbers. It's very kind of. What would possibly happen? This. this is the, uh, of course, I represent the number that I call this. And this is what happened. They say, what's going on? How come this elaborate, natural structure was encoded in this tremendously simple law? Well, for a mathematician, they say, oh, well, but you're just looking at the economic world of complexity of this object is very small. But why? Uh, we still don't cannot prove that this object quite exists. But we can see with our eyes. Uh, people have proved that the Apollonian packing of circles in the circles is there, but not the whole structure. In any case, it's an outstanding open problem. It's very beautiful to look at all this structure that appears just from this very low entropy state. An extremely simple loss of physics. So, uh, this is a typical example of self organized criticality. It's self organized. So, I didn't program the computer to do this fractal. I didn't program the computer to do this fractal. The fractal appeared on itself. It's self organized. And well, this is a technical thing. I'm going to say that there is what I'm going to call a group. And something that makes me fall in love with the subject is this remarkable fact. I've never seen anything like that in the mathematical lab. That it's the only group I know where it's very hard to compute the zero. This is zero in this universe. And it's it's what is zero. And moreover, zero is a factor. You gotta know what he's saying. So this is zero. This is zero in this universe. This is the this is the state, you know, the the, the vacuum of the physical system. This is nothing. So this is nothing. Very beautiful nothing. Okay, so that's something uh, very awesome. We cannot prove that that's a bad word. We can't put the dice for it. Is it square? Can't put it there. Yeah. It's a mathematical subject where we know much more thanks to the enormous power of computers than we can do. Yeah. Anyway, the next work is where INSTA, the Institute for Mathematical Science of the Americas, and this work, yeah, the network is in collaboration with uh, Alan Munoz. Nikita Kalini, 
eh, Jennifer Biafara, Michel Schaubekopf, eh, Pablo Cruz y Daniel Tavares. Daniel Tavares. From Latin America. Eh, de Caribbean, Barranquilla, eh, Gabi, San Petersburg, Switzerland, etc. So, eh, eh, this, uh, this subject attracts people from all of them. In any case, uh, self organized capacity appears in this legendary paper in July 17, 1997, with the most quoted paper in the decade of the 90s in the field of physics. And it's for the discoveries that I just described. Of course, they didn't have it, but they couldn't draw the things, so the guys are already smart. But they couldn't draw the things, so you feel the properties of this thing that we can see now with the computer. In many processes, many GP use our computer now, we can see this thing. But the calculations get really, they are integer, integer operations, and there is no shelter. Is a, a computer with flexibility, so you just have to compute to get the whole thing. In any case, uh, they thought that it was a fantastic model for seismography. You have this mathematical sample, and now you, took, now you have this one, the one that you put the fractal, and you draw this little grain of sand. And most of it, it does a little stopping and little stuff. Little grain of sand, little topping, little topping, little topping. But then now that you put a grain of sand, not the same as the first. And it's the same statistical law that for seismology. But you never reduce now to the laws of Newton. You just have this more holistic model, non linear model, self organized model. The critical things were is about the fact that. Uh, you have this scale because this scale appear, appear first in physics in thermodynamics at phase transition for water of grease that forms uh, small flakes. So, phase transition is all about criticality, and so because the same statistics that appear at phase transition in thermodynamics appears to be by just a little bit statistics of a sample, that's why it was uh, called. The organizers like this, like this, they can face on phase transition, but unlike classical thermodynamical phase transition, you have to have the temperature just so and, and things just so that it freezes and created this uh, complex, very beautiful ones. Uh, here, the system doesn't want to go off the it wants to be at the instant. They cannot take it now. Let's say this is so weak. Uh, you don't need to adjust the temperature, nothing. No fine tuning of parameters. In any case, when you go in, start noticing these beautiful thin graphs and triangles. And if you are in algebra geometry, you say, So, uh, well, that's what that we perceive when we zoom in. And saw these little lines there. We said, Oh, we in the other recognize algebraic judge. What is algebraic geometry? When what you study in school, when you study parabolas and hyperbolas and circles, this is algebraic geometry. And we recognize that things like parabolas, shadows of parabolas, but with the same structure. So, uh, Scaling is very important here, but I'm going to very often skip this explanation. Uh, so, our investigations relating to this, this tropical algebraic geometry to this sample self critical self criticality models uh, ended up in, in, uh, in this beautiful picture on the cover of NAS. So, I'm very proud of the picture. Uh, it took us a week of computation to produce this picture. It, 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 the screen doesn't look very good, but it has such beautiful detail down to the to the, to the several scales. In any case, uh, this is type of electricity and pattern emergence to the length of tropical geometry. We were also 
able to meet uh, other emergence in biology using uh, these scaling properties of the sun. I won't go over much of that because I want to cover something else. Uh, these so called the tropical algebraic curves appear in nature. They appear in semiconductor growth and this kind of systems. So, they, uh, this is part of this very famous quote the only for effectiveness of mathematics and natural science. They were not discovered. This tropical geometry was not discovered to model physical systems or nature or biological systems. Not at all. They were discovered in pursuit of basic curiosity based understanding of the world of mathematics. Nevertheless, very rapidly, once you know it, you recognize it in nature. And you have this unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in the natural sciences. And in very applied the sciences that can go very directly to industry. So uh, this is a remarkable fact. It's a big misuse metaphysical reality of mathematics. What is the way it is? Uh, so I want to go into another subject that we have worked on that is artificial life. As I, I started my talk talking about the fact that the archetypical self organized system of the year, well, this is a self organized system. Uh, this law, this universality law, is amazing and it comes out in our work. But we, what we want to understand is life. But of course, life is hard. This has been mentioned several times that this concept life is hard. And so we cheat. And just like there's this old joke that says that uh, a physicist starts a problem uh, a ground of the same. Let's assume the cow is round and frictionless. So I will assume the cow is round and frictionless. I will take astoundingly simplified models of life just to understand what could possibly be true. Uh, just even get hypothesis, reasonable hypothesis for uh, the understanding of biological systems. So the founder of this idea is the grand John Conman, December 28, 1903, February 8, 1957. He had it's his last work. He died uh, with the manuscript in the hand. But I'm talking to you, it's a very interesting example of the weeks. So uh, well, Conman did everything. He is one of the greatest mathematical minds of the 20th century. Uh, he, of course, was a power figure at the IAS. And of course, the IAS has influence on institutes, also in Philip Capilli. And uh, so he did foundations of mathematics, did the form of mathematics, the set theory, measure theory. Functional analysis, all the theory, the theory, the theory, the presentation, the theory, the theory, all of this is a complicated mathematics. In physics, quantum mechanics, hydrodynamics, nuclear physics, quantum statistical mechanics. In economics, the kind of game theory and general equilibrium theory. In computing, he is uh, uh, linear programming, the, the, the models of all have common architecture, common architecture, linear programming. The American methodology, scientific computing, self replicating machines. And this is what I care about today. Uh, so, that's the computer and statistics, operational theory of quantum mechanics, functional analysis, development of game theory, of course. And with the science of lab, he created the concept that has a related, for example, in uh, on the stock of a uh, cellular automata, the universal constructor. And it's interesting, he is uh, one of the most interesting 16 human mathematics, 16 applied mathematics, 20 in physics, and several of them were, uh, based on the other the official collective works, were classified uh, top secret. So there's some, some common methods which can be But it is, it's now in the lecture period of the 20th century. 
In any case, uh, she's last work and published an unfinished manuscript written when she was in the hospital. Was he publishing more formats the computer in the brain? Was he incredibly important? His analysis of the structure of cell replication preceded the discovery of the structure of DNA. He, your thinking, essentially discovered not the same call and this, but how DNA works. He is extremely surprised. Again, in this field of artificial life, you have not discovered AC in the that sequence and that. It's an intellectual curse because you discover that there has to be a long war that has to have a copy that it has to come there. You don't know the exact, the exact language of the book, but you're doing an experiment. abstract mathematics. Uh, but still, you can discover enormous uh, amounts of uh, beautiful facts about life. Okay. So, uh, this is the area. And here it should be mentioned we said that the all these revolution work all the other programmers were really. And they made a lot of the inventions in the theory of algorithms that we take for granted today. A lot of them were recognized because well they were just the cryptographer yeah. managerial <laughs> work, but they were very creative and they created a lot of the more of modern computer science. All the other programmers were women. In any case, uh, this is the area. And a towering example is Clara Dunn from uh, August 18, 1911, uh, November 10, 1963. That was a national champion in figure skating. And then uh, she married the woman from the beginning of life and with her husband. And she immigrated, this is with immigrated to the United States with four money. But she had a professor of physics in the United States. In 1943, the uh, middle of the war, the woman moved to the Southern National Laboratory in New Mexico to work on calculation as part of the Manhattan. The under name of the principal with the faulty physics. Work at the University Office of Population Research. It was that national champion of the city. And that business she became one of the best national champions in the world. Uh, after the war, Dan Jones from London in New Mexico to program the Maniac one machine, which could store data. This time by her husband and Julia Pigano. She didn't work on the ENIAC, that one that we saw, the photograph, and she led it through. Many uh, electronic numerical integration computers, but I'm trying to find my own to be the first successful meteorological forecast of a computer. This was very influential for Mr. Magma, as Juliana then is an inheritor of that uh, tradition as Yuna, a member of Collegium Nacional, the book he was under the Collegium Nacional, just as Jose Antonio Lapenais, was his successor. And uh, of Adam and uh, the present group of friends of the University of Miami. In any case, uh, this, is, uh, this is what produced this uh, first successful methodological forecast on a computer. Dan assigned new controls for ENIAC and was one of its primary programmers. She trained a group of people, mainly women, I don't think it might have to start producing five she taught the methodologies how to program ENIAC, where she managed uh, 100,000 punch cards and she knew there were no data. So she made a camera man, 1,000 punch cards. Uh, she worked for 32 days in the vehicle. She saw the blue and checked the file and code. And uh, her husband is dead from cancer, 1957. Remember what I said about the computer in the day? And wrote the preface to his Silverman lectures. It's fantastic. You got her. The lecture was published in 1958 and later edited and published by Yale University Press, The Computer in the Brain. So today's stuff could not exist at all without their intellectual contribution. And I wanted to honor that. In any case, uh, 
von Neumann, the founder of uh, father of artificial life. I'm going to go a little bit faster because how many more minutes? I'm just a little bit track. How many more minutes do I have? Okay, so uh, uh, I won't say that von Neumann is the one, I will not say that von Neumann is the one to introduce diamond in numbers because he understood diamonds, but I will not say that. In any case, uh, he didn't end up several automatons and many other things. Uh, Claude Shannon has this amazing paper where he explains that uh, self replication. Uh, is a subject that is very related to the gain and completeness of theory. Uh, so biology is very, very, very related to the gain and completeness theory. In our work, this has shown us very naturally. And uh, uh, in any case, there is phrase that Claude uh, Shannon has that I like very much. Uh, Border biologically by neurophysiology, the theory of neuronets and the like. So he was really inspired. He called, he's the first person to use the phrase neural network. And he models me what we mean today. It wasn't true. But even back then, he understood very early on that one needed this computation in the bicycle of neural network. Uh, in any case, Jonathan and himself. Anybody who looks at living organisms knows perfectly well that they can produce all their organisms by themselves. This is their normal function. They wouldn't exist if they didn't do this, and it's plausible that this is the reason why they are bound in the world. No, it was. Living organisms are very complicated creations of the large part. By any reasonable theory, the probability and or thermodynamics is highly improbable. That they should occur in the world at all is a miracle of the first man. Well, this is a method of the second magnitude. Von Neumann concept, the universal concept, concept. And this little line that you see down there is DNA before DNA. So the line on the bottom makes copies of itself. And he did that. You don't have a moment to be able to do that. But he did. And he, he produced this, he discovered the first step to produce energy. So he is the original god of artificial light. He produced with his hands on the, on the sixth day of the earth the first step to produce machine. And it already had was that RNA or DNA, depends on your thing. Let's say DNA. So I know. That's one of them for you on the hospital bed. In any case, uh, Conway, for instance, again, uh, improved a little bit on these or, or modified a little bit this story with the cellular chemical, which Conway gave of that. Uh, so this rules, and then sorry, I will just keep the rules and stop the video. And uh, there is an important mathematical thing that was, took a while to prove by Conway and Colliantos. Then, if light is a universal theory machine, can compute anything that can be finite, computed in finite terms. So, uh, well, what does it mean? I will have to skip this one. I'll put this one. And Let's see what it means for it to be a universal Turing machine. Uh, well, it's some sort of game, some sort of video game that depends on the initial states. So you put these initial states and then your rounds with this lots of physics, just like the sun. Let's see that for example, slightly different. And you, you have a scale, and then you start thinking at a different scale, even far away, you start thinking at a different scale. And the thing is that light 
So, Langton discovered many cellular automatons. He really understood the field of artificial life. He was a fascinating character, but I cannot tell you his story, but read it. Fascinating character, never got really an academic job. Genius, created so many things, many things named after him. He, and then he dropped out, and fantastic story. Uh, uh, beautiful work. And uh, he has this family of cellular automaton. And this is a mathematical conjecture. It's related to a mathematical conjecture in graph theory too. And or a hyperbolic discrete dynamical systems, whatever, change your policy. But anyway, he puts these rules like that generally the sample of the game of life, some rules, basically. Nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. I will accelerate this, you know. I have a, a nice speech to say while you are hypnotized by this video game. Nothing happens, but I won't say it. Nothing happens, nothing happens. For hours, nothing happens. And then, oh, oh I, 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 and then, and then, unpredictably, Far in the future, the computer progress itself. So, uh, this one is, I don't know. 
Theorem, Gajardo Moreira Goles, Universidad de Chile, this automaton that we saw is a universal field machine. It can compute anything that can be computed in the world. It can compute, it can program itself. It has the ability, it's expressed enough to express itself. For Kevin, this is very important. Expressed enough to express itself, to describe itself. This is by Robert Berlus picture of a Turing machine. This is the original Turing machine. This is the original Turing machine. It was just a tape, not a square. No, uh, the, the innovation of Lama, no, 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 but to put it on a square, not on a tape. And, uh, well, I will abstract chemistry away. I will abstract chemistry away by using this theory of Marcelo Magnas. But as you can see, this field is the Latin component, this field is not clear. In any case, uh, Marcelo Magnasco proves that he has been taking the field of the And this paper, which is a uh, uh, produced a lot of other papers, even more recent papers, for many uh, various versions of uh, the University for chemistry. So I abstract. Chemistry away and said, All I will do is about chemistry is that it's really universal. And then, when you see these uh, little problems, the number of these also in the graph to a curves, and they can present that curves on proposed, depending on their DNA. Totally proposed, they start by the graph curves in a step of the moment. In any case, this is a beautiful analytic curve in topical geometry. This is the image of the moment map of two dimensional complex space in space. And you can see it's about itself produce the topical algebraic curve. It's a strong success to produce the special algebraic curve. In any case, I was reading the Opus Martin of Eugene Kuhn, the logic of China. Masterpiece. And uh, I was reading the book of the book of the book of the cosmos and the book of the book of the book of the book of the and the book of 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 the the universality of the the any during universal system that starts producing copies of itself will have will it have the signatures, the monumental signatures of self-organized physical is my question. And can I get the universality of the origin of that, not the number, but the probability distribution given by universality for the origin of that? And we do it. Why not? So we use artificial intelligence to give to give thousands of thousands of variations of the origin of life. In fact, they are countably they are you can enumerate them this in the universal universe. For me, chemistry is a discretization machine. That let, allow me to escape the continuum and go into the script. For me, chemistry is a computation machine. Of course, chemical genetics is complicated, and there is intermediate intense of partial computation, but let me be honest. Chemistry is a computation machine. Then I use the, uh, I use the, I use artificial intelligence to detect. In millions of millions of experiments, but, it, but having slight variations in the laws, the local laws of interaction, uh, I detect the origin of life in thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of experiments uh, using a supercomputer and GPUs, that kind of thing. Then the artificial intelligence feels that the energy of this experimenting or dropping dramatically. Is my definition of life. Entropy is dropping. What is going on? But 
I measure the entropy of the physical system. The entropy collapses, and I detect with artificial intelligence these patterns. I do some basic neural network regressions, and uh, you have the signature of a self-organized physical system. So this is our result. Uh, this is a discovery of Alvaro Muñoz. Uh, he did, he more or less proved that you'll always have viruses in any living system. You'll always have agents that use the information of all other agents when they're their information pool. And they'll steal the information from other agents to prosper themselves. So viruses are also univer universal in life. I bet, I, will, I bet that in any version of life on the universe, there will be viruses because of this discovery. And this is the end. The first thing he says is cool. The second thing he says is the Michael Keener used to say that uh, if you brought Newton and Gauss time machine that they're here. Take me, Michael Keener said, it will take me about three months to catch up. And then they will be doing contributions, Newton and Gauss, uh, at Eminem or people like that, that talent. And your question, I think that fundamentally two or three months would be doing a ton of things. It would be all it. It would be on my own revenge, if I may call it like that. Because you see, biographies, biographers of one moment point that uh, one moment would say, oh, my call is Elisha. Well, and this is why I call for no much revenge. The electronic computer change all of science, physics, God, all of science, matter, all of science, all of science was changed by electronic computation. And by his ideas on what computation should be. So, uh, he will be open. If you know how, a couple of weeks. Really? Sorry, your voice is part of me, and I'm very bad at my age. So, what do you say? It's hard to believe, you know, that we have so many It was a national champion of physics skating, and they invented most of modern simulation algorithms later on. So, uh, yeah, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But you have a question. Structures, the 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 structures,
And then you make a, a layered graph composition, very humble composition. We have a reasonable conjecture for the physics. One is the not the, the number one point probability for the area of that, but the probability distribution in many, uh, many things. Yeah, but I'm just talking about the shape of the distribution, not the parameters. So I can, I'm sure I'm right. <laughs> but I have a place to experiment that was mentioned in her talk. Uh, some of my kids. Uh, I think that uh, there is a, no, it's me, it's not me. But there's a profound amount of between probability of organization and mathematics. I mean, everybody knows statistics. Because you can translate the, the directive for self copying into a directive for probability. So, for this reason, there are people who have talked cleverly about this. Uh, the, I also think that it's a refined general incompletion theory that tells me not that there exists on the side of the sentence, but what is the probability that it's given to the side of the sentence. And so, these are specific, specific mathematical conditions. I, I, and this is consistent with the Chinese. So, mm -hmm. okay. 